Hey everyone, this is going to be a different kind of video than what you're probably used to. I'm not going to be testing any LLMs in this video. I'm just going to be using this opportunity to reflect upon my usage of the full O1 model that was accidentally perhaps leaked from OpenAI or they just released it prematurely. And as some of you know, I've been in the AI space for less than two months. And so I'm still figuring a lot of things out. A lot of it is still very new to me. I think it's new to a lot of people. And again, my channel is just trying to explore my curiosity with these models. And hopefully it's somewhat entertaining and useful for the people who are developing it. I've been told by people at OpenAI and other startups that it, these are actually really good things that I'm doing. So I'm gonna keep doing them as much as I can. Um, and uh, I appreciate all the support. But I wanted to spend a few minutes discussing what I think is next for artificial intelligence because the O1 Mini, the O1 Preview, and then the full O1 model that I was using the other day has really affected the way I think about what is possible with artificial intelligence. Now, when ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 came out towards the end of my PhD in 2023, I thought they were impressive, but I didn't think they were earth-shatteringly incredible. I, I mean, they were incredible, but I just didn't think that they would go beyond being a quote-unquote stochastic parrot. And I was impressed at how realistic some of their paragraphs and their sentences and the code snippets they would provide looked. Even though they were not perfect, it was still quasi-human-like. Now, with O1 Mini, O1 Preview, and then the full-on O1 model that is on the way, even though I, I did sample it a little bit, they're probably going to update it or tweak it a little bit. I think it changes a couple of things because now we're getting into these AI models that can reason, whatever that means, and having these AI models, these potential AI agents that, that can autonomously do tasks, that changes so much. And I know that AI job automation has been talked about in the past and people are talking about it now, but I think with O1, when I was using it and I was seeing how it was able to reason in its own way, and then thinking about how OpenAI already has, I think they have O1 vision and audio, I think, in-house in the sense that they have an O1 model that can be multimodal and take in video and real-time um, you know, images and make comments and decisions or inferences in those things and about those things in real time. And that I think is so impressive. And yet it's also kind of terrifying because I, I really am concerned for many people because I do think there are industries that can get completely taken out and replaced by these models. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to cause a panic. I'm just trying to tell you what I think the logical next step is. I think there are still many problems or roadblocks when it comes to regulation, how this is gonna get implemented. Will the government step in to, to help people who are gonna be displaced? There's so many unknowns and we're living in such a very chaotic and uncertain time. I mean, if you look around the world, I'm not going to list specific things, but a lot of different things are happening. And it also makes me just really appreciate the privilege I have to be living where I'm living uh, in San Francisco or the San Francisco Bay Area where I'm from and have the opportunity to have this YouTube channel and make these somewhat silly videos at times where I'm just messing around with these AIs, getting it to sing and and do a bunch of silly stuff. But apart from the humor, there is at the core of my investigations and all of this is an underlying curiosity as well as concern for the future of the human race at large because I don't think it's an overstatement now to say that AI will affect us all eventually, barring any huge world catastrophe, and that the rate at which it will be deployed and where it will be deployed will take time and some countries of course like the United States will get access to the benefits first and then it will disperse and move its way to other parts of the world but I do think that it's a phenomena like the iPhone or the internet but that can somehow improve itself 
given enough time. And for example, today I was taking a course from deeplearning.ai that was founded by Andrew Ng of Stanford University. And I took this one hour course on LLM memory and RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation. I believe that's, that, I believe that's correct. And I, I didn't really know much about RAG before I took this course, which was a good thing why I took it. But I started thinking just, wow, we're going to have these models that can store memories, that can compute way faster than our brains, that can recursively perhaps self-improve one day. And it just got me thinking, are we ready? I mean, are we ready? That's the thing. My personal feeling is that we're not in the sense that a majority of people still don't really know too much about AI outside of maybe having heard about ChatGPT, but even if they've heard of it, they may not actually actively be using it. And so there's just a very small bubble of people, which a lot of you are probably involved in, that know about the transformative capabilities of this technology. But sometimes I have to catch myself and pause and think, you know, am I just overblowing this? Am I jumping the gun here? Am I reaching conclusions way too early in advance? Because I, I want to stay somewhat skeptical and objective and nuanced and not be a harbinger of misinformation or hype that is unwarranted. But at the same time, I'm, I'm using these models in my videos and I'm, I'm experimenting with them and I see what they can do. And my reactions when you watch them are genuine. I really do have surprise and shock and awe and just wonder at what these AI models are capable of. And I've said this before to many different people in the field that even if you stopped everything now, if O1 was the last thing we got from OpenAI and they were able to just keep that you know, profitable somehow, I don't know how, that I would still think that is a game-changing technology for so many different industries, especially if you combined it with audio and voice and, and it's multimodal and whatnot. And so, again, I don't think they're gonna stop. They probably are not gonna stop. I think they already have O2. Maybe O2 is on the way or it's already in-house. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't work with OpenAI. This is not sponsored by OpenAI. Also, sorry, OpenAI, for, for showing your model the other day. Please don't be mad at me. But yeah, I just think that it's, like I keep saying, it's an exciting time, but it's also a concerning time. And I think a lot about the people in my life who just are not really interested in AI or know too much about AI, but who could potentially face the consequences of an ever improving technology that will slowly remove the need for human labor. And to be perfectly blunt, I don't fully see the path for the powers that be to provide, you know, the common person who is not into AI or has a job that could get automated by AI, the help they uh, need and the resources they need to, to survive in this new coming economy. So anyways, I've been rambling for like close to 10 minutes, so I think I'm going to chill now, but Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate this opportunity I have to share my thoughts on artificial intelligence and test these models and meet so many amazing people in artificial intelligence through just the videos I've been making and events I've been attending in San Francisco. I've met so many awesome people who are developing really cool tech and I sometimes catch myself thinking, what am I doing in these spaces? I don't, I don't know anything. <laughs> But I think that's one of the beautiful things about AI is that it can actually help you learn a lot of things. I've been learning a lot of things with AI and teaching myself new ideas and concepts with ChatGPT, Claude, and you, know, you name it. And I, I just, I'm excited to keep doing it. So thanks for watching. I'll be back with other testing videos in the near future, but I hope you have a great night.